I want to spell out a particular system that I think could be very useful that's rooted in the biology of habit formation, rooted in the psychology of habit formation, encompasses a bit of a longer time scale, and really arrives at a kind of a system, if you will, for how to build in habits and then to test whether or not those habits have really stuck and whether or not they're likely to stick going forward. Welcome to Brian and Paul. I am Brian, and I'm happy to continue this discussion about habits, why I am utilizing the tools and actions that Andrew Huberman has so graciously provided in his podcast, why he is suggesting this approach as an actionable tool that anyone can use to achieve success in reaching their goals and achieving new habits. This is, at least for sake of this example, a 21-day system. I picked 21 days because that seems to be the average or most typical system for engaging neuroplasticity as it relates to the formation of new habits. So basically what this involves is you set out to perform six new habits per day across the course of 21 days. The idea is you write down six things that you would like to do every day for 21 days. The expectation is that you'll only complete four to five of those each day. So built into this is a kind of permission to fail, but it's not failure because it turns out that this approach to forming habits is based not so much on the specific habits that you're trying to form, but the habit of performing habits, right? It's the habit of doing a certain number of things per day. Another reason for not necessarily performing all six is that some activities probably shouldn't be performed each day. For instance, in my case, if I were to weight train or even run every day, I'm of the sort or my biology is of the sort that I don't recover so well. So I wouldn't want to do resistance training every day, but I might want to do it four days a week, for instance. So by having six things in that list, I could shuffle out that particular activity on particular days of the week and simply do four or five other activities. So 21 days, you list out four to five things. So it might be zone two cardio, resistance training, sunlight viewing, writing. Uh, it could be journaling. It could be learning a language, mathematics. Again, this is going to vary depending on your particular goals and the habits that you're trying to create, but no more than six. And the expectation is that you're not going to perform more than four to five. If you miss a day, meaning you don't perform four to five things, there is no punishment. And in fact, it's important that you don't actually try and do what in the literature is called a habit slip compensation, which is just fancy psychological language for if you screw up and you don't get all four or five in one day, you don't do eight the next day in order to compensate. If you happen to screw up and not be able to engage in whatever habits you're trying to learn for whatever reason, that the next day you just get right back on the horse, so to speak. However, there's a really interesting feature from the neuroscience literature and from the psychology literature that says that chunking this 21 days into two day bins can be very, very useful. While it is true that the unit of the day that our cells use is a circadian one, a 24 hour clock, there does seem to be something powerful about engaging in particular habits in a particular sequence for two days in a row and then resetting. So thinking, okay, I can do this for a day. And if I can do it for a day, I can probably do it for two days and then resetting. So every two days you're resetting. So you're kind of chunking this 21 days into a series of two day bins in which you are trying to perform four to five new habits and then completing that 21 days. Now, everything I've described about this 21 day program with six things that you're trying to do as new habits and only performing four to five and not compensating, et cetera. There's nothing neuroscientifically unique about it, except for the fact that it's not just 21 days broken up into two day chunks. After 21 days, you stop engaging in this 21 day deliberate four to five things per day type schedule. And you simply go into autopilot. You ask yourself how many of those particular habits that I was deliberately trying to learn in the previous 21 days automatically incorporated into my schedule? How many of them am I naturally doing? In other words, every 21 days, you don't update and start adding new habits. You simply try and maintain the ones that you've built in that first 21 days. And this I think is extremely important because in all of the habit literature that I could find, sure, there was a lot of psychological data, neuroscience data, behavioral science data around, here's how you form a habit. Here's how you break a habit. There was even some kind of tests for whether or not a habit had achieved context independence, whether or not it was a strongly formed habit. There wasn't a lot of information, at least by my search, of what to do once you formed a habit and how to evaluate whether or not that habit is likely to persist long into the future. So here's the idea. You set out these six things that you would like to learn 
or that you would like to acquire in your life, these habits. You only expect that you're going to perform four or five each day. You do that for 21 days. Again, if you miss a day, you just hop right back on the next day. However, you should think about the functional units within this 21 day period as two days. You're going to try and nail four to five of these things for two days. If you happen to get all six, great, but that's not necessarily required. So you can do it for two days, then reset two days, then reset two days. And then in the next 21 days, you're not trying to acquire any new habits. You're not going to throw in six more habits that you want to learn. You're simply going to assess how well, how deeply you've rewired your nervous system to be able to perform those six habits of the previous 21 days. And this is extremely useful, I believe, because it will allow you to assess whether or not you can indeed make room, if you even have room, I should say, for more habits. Many people are trying to cram so many new behaviors into their nervous system that they don't stand a chance of learning all those behaviors. What you may find is that you kept up two of those things very consistently throughout the 21 days. And perhaps there was one of them that you did sporadically and that there were three others that frankly, you didn't manage to execute. You may also be one of these people, one of these mutants that sets out to do six new things per day for 21 days and performs every single one of them. Terrific, more power to you. In that case, for the following 21 days, let's see whether or not you can continue to perform those very same six things every day for 21 days. And then, and only then, would you want to add more habits in. So you could repeat this 21 day process, you know, 21 days of, of new habit, 21 days of testing those new habits as whether or not they're reflexive or not. You could do that uh, forever if you wanted. But the idea is that this isn't something that you're doing all year long. You set out to make that 21 day, really the stimulus period in which the habits get wired in. And then the following month, and maybe even the following months or periods of 21 days are really the kind of thermometer or the test bed of how well you've embedded those particular habits. And if indeed you want to continue to add new habits, or you find that certain habits that you weren't able to embed in your nervous system and make reflexive, you want to then bring those in. Fantastic. But it's only once you've achieved all those six habits as reflexive that you would move forward. And I think this sort of system, while it could have been replaced with many other different systems, again, there's nothing holy about the system, but this particular system has a number of features, the lack of compensation for missed days, the fact that it's a fairly high intensity program for 21 days, but then you test yourself, a kind of a competition test with yourself, if you will. Those features and the fact that habit slips, missing of particular habits and not doing all six is kind of built into the system, I think makes it a very reasonable one. It's very adaptable to the real world. And I think there's a very high probability that the habits that you try and form will achieve this context dependence and that it will take progressively less and less limbic friction to perform them. I love this idea of how he has broken down into a methodology for someone to track and focus on six habits that want to be attainable and how to overcome that limbic friction, yet not create a process of punishment that goes along with it. Instead, create a process of motivation. I find many of these aspects very, very beneficial because what it is doing is it's not the idea for me personally, when I don't do something that I fail or that I need to overcompensate, it takes a lot of the pressure off of me to think about, I have to do everything, right? Some habits I kind of want a daily focus on and say a habit of going to the gym is a habit that I don't necessarily want a daily focus on. For example, there was a period of time I missed three days of going to the gym in a row. I didn't feel necessarily bad, but what I was actually missing was the feeling of how energetic I was, which really gets into that factor of dopamine and the reward recognition of achievement, just the energy of the physical exercise. There have been some ups and downs, but overall, five of the six habits that I've been focused on have really made a substantial amount of progress to have three weeks of what I would call overall success is what is creating a positive influence. Now I'll also continue the idea of uh, detailing out my first 21 days. What are those results in another upcoming video? However, what I really want everybody to understand for themselves is this is a very actionable item. And I highly suggest considering the information to help you 
be able to start this type of process because one of the aspects I love and how it was described is that this is a habit of how to build habits. And that's what I find exciting. And then I'm looking as I'm ending my 21 days to how that is translating into the next 21 days is I'm going through an evaluation process to now track and identify what is built into my process successfully from that roughly 85% and the reduction of the friction and mental energy to continue with that habit and make it sustainable that I really think and feel are important for me to continue to grow and make progress. And I think when you take time to figure out what six habits you might want to do and create this habit building approach, you will find a solid method of progress to help you continue to grow towards your goals and make progress in your life. We do appreciate you watching. And if you've enjoyed the content, please consider liking and subscribing to the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your time and interest. Continue to make progress in your life.